hello, it's me. Uh, I was not going to record another video tonight. I thought, man, I need to. You, you are going into this right now, I can tell. So I felt like I needed to do the same. So we are working on 3.3. We are doing parabolas and story problems. All right. And so we're going to take what we learned so far and then add them to story problems. Uh, we're going to kind of go back and forth between what are you looking for? Is it the when or is it the what? And so that's the main idea here. If you understood what we're doing so far, not too bad. Don't be scared of story problems. That's the number one mistake that students make is they worry about story problems and think, oh, I can't do this. Yeah, you can. It's the same thing you've already been doing. It's just applying it. Like this is why math is good is being able to talk about it in a story problem context. If it's always just numbers and it doesn't mean anything, but when you can apply it to the real world, that's when we're actually learning something. So there's my little soapbox. Let's get to it. Here we go. It says, well, let's look at the top part here. Understand the difference between these two concepts. And I think this is really important. All right. If you, the question in the problem that you're doing is asking for when or where, Okay, when something is happening or where something is happening, they are 95% of the time talking about the X value of the problem. You're going to find the X value or sometimes the T. They, they make it even easier and call it T for time. All right. If we are solving for the what, like what was the height? What was the amount? That is normally a Y value question. All right, just keep that in mind. It's helpful in story problems to understand, hey, what am I looking for here? All right, let's look. The value of Jennifer's stock portfolio is given by this function. So this function right here, where V is the value of the portfolio, so it's gonna tell you what the how much it's worth in hundreds of dollars, and T is the time in months. When will Jennifer's portfolio be at a maximum? And so that's the key to this problem, is understanding what does this look like? And so part of it is just like, hey, what is this graph? Oh, it's a quadratic. That makes it a parabola. It's a negative 3t squared parabola. So which way is it going to open? It's doing this. Okay, negative 3t. Whoa, that's an ugly parabola. It's that right there. All right, so th that's what this is. So it, uh, visualizing that equation is helpful here. When, when, so we're looking for the time. Will the value be at a maximum? So tell me when I get to the maximum. Oh, uh, yeah, right there. And what is that point? That is the vertex. Okay, that is the vertex of this parabola. And we can find the vertex of this parabola in lots of different ways. We could do x is equal to negative b over 2a and do it that way. Uh, I'm going to do this a little bit different of a way I'm, just because of this next part. I'm going to do the, put it in standard form thing. So you don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it this way. Y equals negative 3t squared. Nah, I lied. <laughs> I lied. Let's do it the, the easy way. All right. So negative b over 2a. So it's going to be negative 84 divided by 2 times negative 3. So it's negative 84 divided by negative 6. I'm using my calculator. I'm cheating over here. Not really cheating, but I just don't want to do it. So it is 14. Well, why did I use this formula? Because this is telling me the vertex of a parabola and I want the X value because I'm trying to figure out when that is happening. And so that is my answer, 14 months, because T is in months, but 14 months is when I'm gonna hit a maximum because that would be the vertex of this parabola. What, what is the maximum value? Okay, that value part, that is the, the Y value. Okay, or in this case, it's the V. So if I'm trying to figure out the value here, I need to find the Y value. Well, how am I gonna find the Y value? What is the maximum value? Again, think about this shape, it's a parabola. We found the X value, now I gotta find the Y value. And how do I do that? I plug it into this equation. And so I'm going to find the value at 14 months. Or in other words, I'm going to take 14 and plug it in here for T. There's lots of different ways to do it, but if you're good with your calculator, don't, don't play around. Negative three times 14 squared plus 84 times 14 plus 50. I could do this on my screen, but these are pretty straightforward problems. It's just a matter of plugging it into my calculator. 638 
Uh, that's in hundreds of dollars. So 638 hundreds of dollars. That's awful. I do not like how that's said, uh, but we'll go with it. All right. So, boom, that's it. It's $63,800, but I'm going to write it how it was written. What will the value of the portfolio be in five months? Well, what is five months? Is that a value? Is that a what? Or is that a win? Well, five months is a win. What should I do with that? That's my T. And so what they're asking is, what is your, what is the value going to be when T equals five? Or in other words, we are going to take this equation and plug five in for T. That's all I'm doing here. That's just a matter of plugging it in. So again, I'm going to my calculator, negative three times five squared plus 84 times five plus 50. Type it in, hit enter. I get three hundred and ninety five uh, dollars, hundreds of dollars. That's it. And so most of that is not tough at all. It's just understanding what they're doing and that whole idea of a maximum. OK, understanding what this graph will look like is really beneficial to you in the end. So keeping that in mind is going to help you out a little bit. I'm just using a regular calculator. You don't have to have anything fancy here. Uh, Desmos would be a great graph as well. There would be a great way to do these problems as well. Which graph below could be the graph of Jennifer Stocks? Well, we know that. It was a negative 3t squared. So if it was negative 3t squared, that's going to be Jennifer Stocks. It's going to be a downward facing parabola. And hey, look, we found this value. You can tell right there that, yep, 638. That looks about right. Let's continue with example two. A manufacturer of tennis balls has a daily cost of this guy right here. All right, so I think one of the most important things is labeling stuff. This C of X equation is gonna tell you the cost of the tennis balls. Where C is the total cost in dollars and X is the number of tennis balls produced. So X is the number of tennis balls produced. What number of tennis balls will produce the minimum cost? We just kind of forgot that word there, but let's go minimum cost. So again, the key to this problem is understanding this picture. It's a 0 0.01 x squared equation. So what does that mean? Well, it's x squared, so it's a parabola, and it's positive, so it's opening up. So this concept is gonna work like this, and if I want to find the minimum, all right, that's the whole goal here, is to find the minimum cost. How am I gonna find the minimum cost? I'm gonna find the vertex of this parabola. That's it. So again, we could do this in a lot of different ways. We have found a lot of different ways to do vert vertices, the vertex here, but the easiest way is gonna be X is equal to negative B over two A. So negative B would be positive 10, cause it'd be negative, negative 10, divided by two times A, so two times 0 0.01. So I'm gonna jump to my calculator here. I'm typing in 10 divided by be careful here when you type this into your calculator. Those two things need to be in parentheses because you're multiplying them together on bottom. Um, if you just type 10 divided by 2 times 0 0.01, you'll get the wrong answer. The correct answer here is 500. That's not the right answer because what does that 500 represent? That 500 is the X. That's the, oh, that is the number. Oh, just playing. What is the number of tennis balls? We're just playing. That is the right answer. 500. Okay, because what are we trying to do? We're trying to find the number of tennis balls. And what is giving me the number of tennis ball? Tennis balls, X is the number of tennis balls. So if I produce 500 tennis balls, that is going to minimize my daily cost of making those tennis balls. So that was the ultimate goal there. So again, <laughs> I, I started to do it. Don't forget what you're trying to find. Highlight that. That's why I like labeling stuff in the beginning. But in general, a pretty easy question, just finding the X value. A water balloon is catapulted into the air so that its height in meters after t seconds is given by this equation. All right, so here is my equation. That is telling me the height in meters. Time is in seconds. What is the maximum height of the balloon? So this is the equation right here. We're taking this water balloon, we're launching it up in the air. It's gonna reach a maximum and then it's gonna fall back to Earth. This equation right here tells me the height. 
So to find the height, I'm going to have to find the vertex. No. Oh, so x equals negative b over 2a. In this case, I'm, I keep saying x. In this case, I'm finding the t, but it's the same difference. All right, so my negative b, so negative 29.4 divided by 2 times negative 4.9. Again, that thing on bottom needs to go together here. So in my calculator, I'm taking negative 29.4 divided by 2 times negative 4.9. And again, I'm putting that negative 4.9 in parentheses on bottom. The answer that I get here is 3. Is that the answer to the question? That three represents three seconds. Three seconds is when it reaches its maximum. But the question is, what is the maximum height? So if I wanna find the height, I need to take that three and plug it into that equation. So I'm gonna take three and plug it into my height equation. So where that T was, I'm plugging in three. And where that T was, I'm plugging in three. So in my calculator, negative 4.9 times 3 squared plus 29.4 times 3 plus 1. I'm just typing in, hitting enter. I get 45.1 meters. So we are definitely launching that water balloon pretty high. 45 meters is a long way. Easy. Just again, it's finding the vertex, but it's understanding what part of the vertex do I want. In this case, I wanted the height, and so I wanted to plug that time back in. One more, multi-part one here, but let's see what's going on. The profit from selling past football tickets depends on the ticket price. Using past receipts, we'll find the profit can be modeled by this equation right here, where X is the price of the ticket. So basically it's this, X is gonna represent the cost of the ticket, and P represents the profit. And understand why this is true, right? If I sell ticket prices at one penny, if I'm selling tickets to this game and it's one penny, a lot of people are gonna show up, but you're not gonna make very much money. If I sell tickets for $1,000, the people that buy it, you're gonna make money, but you're not gonna sell many tickets. But there's gonna be some sweet spot in the middle, like at 25 bucks, I'm talking probably an NFL game, where you're gonna get a lot of people to go and you're paying a little bit more than one penny, that's what's making that parabola happen here, okay? Because you're gonna try to find that sweet spot where you can charge enough that a lot of people go, and you're also gonna make the most profit. So that's what we're trying to find here. And so this models real world activity here. Find the ticket price that would give the school a maximum profit, all right? So I wanna know the ticket price. So if I'm finding the ticket price, that is X. X is the price of each ticket. So negative b over 2a. I'm trying to find the maximum, so I'm trying to find the vertex. So let's do that. Negative b, so negative 600, divided by 2 times a. So basically we're doing negative 600 divided by negative 30. 20 bucks. That is the X value, which is the price of each ticket. So how much should I charge? 20 bucks is gonna make me the most money. Then we're gonna determine the maximum profit. So I wanna know how much money total are we making? This is the profit, P. And so for me to find my value, I gotta plug a 20 into this equation. So I'm going negative 15 times 20 squared plus 600 times 20 plus 60. I take that, I type it into my calculator. I get 6,000 and sixty dollars that is the maximum profit that is the y value that is the profit number that's going on here part c says find the profit if they sell the tickets for twelve dollars each so again it's the same thing we did on the last one but on the last one we knew exactly what the best number was this time we're just picking some random number in this case we're picking 12 and we're going to see all right how much money am i going to make if i plug 12 in so if I plug 12 in, let's see what we get. So if I plug 12 in, we are going to make $5,100. So I'm not making nearly as much money. Maybe I get more people to show up. And so maybe they buy more concessions. 
but twenty dollars is a better ticket price. And so there's a lot of different things that are going in with that with with factors, but it's a good concept here. All right. So story problems with parabolas. They look scary. They're not that scary. Don't let it be harder than it is. Hope that helps, guys.